Hey guys, what's going on? It's Dave with Evil Eye Games. In today's video, we're going to go ahead and set up our first C++ project. And I'm also going to go through the process of downloading and installing Visual Studio so that you can edit C++ code. Now, this video is going to focus on Windows users. If you're running a Linux or a Unix-based system, I haven't looked into what the supported editor is for C++. Likewise, if you're using an Apple, I'm sorry you wasted your money on an Apple. So when we first start up Unreal Engine, we're going to be brought to the launcher, and we're going to go down to the Library tab. And in the Library tab here is where we're going to contain several different things. At the top, we're going to have our different engine versions. You can have more than one engine version installed at any given time, but something to be aware of is the fact that each of these engine versions is a complete install of the engine. So each engine version is going to take up roughly about 12 gigabytes of space. You can add engine versions by clicking on the Add Versions button at the top here, and then it'll give you this new grayed out engine version. And you can use the drop down to select what version of the engine you want to go ahead and install. The latest version of the engine at the time of me making this video is 4.14.1. Now I already have that installed. So I'm going to go ahead and close out this window. But if you need to install a version of the engine, you can click on this install button. And you can also set which version of the engine you want the engine button up here to automatically launch. And you can do that by using the little drop down. And you can use set current to set whatever version of the engine as what launches natively. Now, right below that, we have the My Projects section, which is going to contain all the projects that you've created with Unreal Engine 4. And right below that, we're going to have the Vault, which is going to contain all of the assets that we've added via the Epic Marketplace. Now, if you're just starting out, I would highly recommend against purchasing any of the assets ahead of time and just stick with free assets. And throughout the course of the series, I'm going to focus on just using free assets. In order to create a new project, I'm simply going to click on the Launch button. You can also click on the Launch button in the top left as well, provided that it is the correct engine version that you want. So I'm going to click on that Launch button. And it's going to go ahead and it's going to start loading the Unreal Editor. And once it finishes loading, you're going to be brought to the Unreal Project Browser. And it's going to have two tabs, the first of which is going to be the Projects tab, which is going to be the existing projects that you have already. And you're also going to have the New Projects tab. We're going to go into the New Projects tab to create a new project. Within this, you're going to have a Blueprint tab and a C++ tab. We want to create a new C++ project, so we're going to click on the C++ tab. Now, at this point, if you haven't installed Visual Studio as of yet, you're going to see a screen like this one. And at the very bottom, you're going to see the exclamation point with a message saying no compiler was found. So in order to install Visual Studio 2015, you're just going to simply click on the button. It will then go ahead and download the Visual Studio installer and you're going to be brought to a screen like this. Now, one thing that's very important here is you're going to want to select the custom bullet. Visual Studio normally doesn't install C++, so we're going to have to select the custom tab so that we can add the C++ libraries. So with that bullet selected, click the Next button, and you're going to be brought to a screen to select the features. And you're going to want to make sure that Visual C++ is checked. None of the other checkboxes really matter as far as Unreal Engine goes, so you can pretty much ignore everything else and just make sure that that Visual C++ box is checked. Once it's selected, click Next, and you're going to be brought to a summary screen with an Install button. So you can go ahead and click on the Install button, and it will go ahead and install Visual Studio. Now once Visual Studio has completed installing, it's going to ask you if you want to go ahead and open it, and you can click on No. But you're going to have to go ahead and close out of the Unreal Project Browser here, and then start it up again by clicking on the Launch button. So you're going to have to click this red X, 
And then once this finishes running, click on the launch button again. And then we'll go into the new project tab and into the C++ tab. And for this, we're just going to go ahead and use the basic code here. So it's going to be as minimal as possible. There are also templates available, so you can take a look at different types of projects. So if you want to open those up and go through the code, you can do that. You can also use them as a template with which to base other projects off of as well. But we want to go ahead and we want to build from the ground up. Down below this, you're going to see three buttons where we're going to have the desktop console. And this is going to be the target of our project or the type of hardware we're targeting with our project. So desktop console is perfectly fine. Then we're going to have a graphical quality level that we're targeting. And maximum quality will be fine as well. And then finally, it'll give us an option for starter content. And we will leave the starter content in. Right below that, you're going to have the option with which folder to actually save the project to. So you can go ahead and click on the three dots and browse and select where you want to save your project. And to the right of that, we're going to give the project a name. So for this tutorial, I'm just going to call this our tutorial project. And then finally, we're going to go ahead and click on create project. Now, depending on your system hardware, this may take longer or it might be quicker as well. And you're going to have to essentially wait for it to generate all of the code. And then it's going to go ahead and open up Visual Studio and the Unreal Engine 4 editor. All right, so once everything finishes loading up like this, the very first thing we want to do is go ahead and click on this compile button at the top here. And you'll see in the lower right hand corner, it's going to compile the code and then it's going to give you a compile complete message. Now we're not going to go too into depth yet as to what the compile button actually does, but essentially we're going to be using it as sort of an error checking device to make sure that we did everything properly. When you're creating the final project, Compiling basically takes the code of Unreal Engine and of C++ and it translates it down into a lower level language that the computer can use. But as we're working on a project here in the editor, we want to regularly compile things to test them and make sure that everything is assembled properly. Now, one of the first things I like to do when I open up a new project is down at the very bottom here, in the content browser under add new button, there is a little icon to show or hide the sources panel. I always like to click on this and it'll give us a file tree for all of the files contained within our project. And just so we can get a quick overview of what's going on with the Unreal Engine 4 editor, at the top left here we have our modes pane and there's four different tabs within it. So there is the place tab, there's the Paint tab, the Landscape tab, a Foliage tab, and Geometry Editing tab. We're going to get into all what these things do when we actually use them, but know that you're going to spend the majority of your time in this actual Place tab, because this is where you actually drag and drop things into the level that you're designing. To the right of that, we have the window into our actual level. Now, Unreal Engine loads up this level by default, but we can certainly get to the point where we're going to edit levels and we're going to put together something for our character to play within. Now, there's a bunch of different buttons up here. Um, to the top left, there are options on how we actually render this window. The first tab right here has a perspective setting, which is set in by default, as well as orthographic camera views. And these orthographic camera views can give us top, bottom, left, right, front and back views. And it will also switch over the viewer to a wireframe. And we can go ahead and switch it back to perspective for now. We're not going to be using that as of yet. But those modes are very useful when you're trying to design a level and fit different things together. To the right of that is the actual rendering. And this will give us options on how to render this window 
whether we want unlit, wireframe, and a bunch of other options down here. Most of the time you're going to spend your time in the lit mode, or if you're designing a level and you're getting ready before you actually add lights to the level, you're going to use unlit. But we'll get to that when we actually use it. And then we have a show tab where you can actually show and hide different elements within this window as well. Honestly, most of the time I don't actually use that, but if we find a use for it, I will go ahead and show you how to use that as well. To the top right over here, we have some of the more important features that we actually use within this window. And the first set of buttons that we have here is the select mode. And what this is basically going to do is when we select an object in the environment, it's going to change how we can manipulate that object. So for example, I'm going to go and grab the statue in the center here by left clicking on it. And you'll notice that it shows three arrow manipulator. And this three arrow manipulator is the translate. So it will move it about in space. So we can grab one of the arrows and drag it left and we can drag it right. Or we can grab the blue arrow and move it up and down. But say we want to go ahead and rotate this object or we want to scale this object. The two buttons next to this are the rotate and the scale. So we can grab the rotate and it'll give us these rotational arcs and we can go ahead and rotate our object along the three different axes. Likewise, if we hit the scale button, we can go ahead and scale it along different axes and we can make it larger or we can make it smaller. Now, a helpful hint is instead of clicking on these icons up here all the time, when you have an object selected, you can actually hit the spacebar to cycle through the three different modes. Now, to the right of our three different manipulator modes, we also have a icon that changes whether we're working in a world scale or whether we're working in the object scale. And basically what this is going to do is it's going to orient the manipulator based on either the world or the object itself. To the right of that, we have settings for snapping. So in the first one, we can go ahead and turn on surface snapping. So if we want to go ahead and move this around and we want it to snap to an object when it gets close to an object, we can enable that. I'm just going to leave it with surface snapping off. Then we have to the right of that a world grid. And this allows us to move objects around based on a grid. So we can set the scale of this grid right next to it. We'll see that there is a set the position grid snap value. And we can set that between 1 and 10,000. So if I up this to 100 and I start to move this object around, you'll see that it moves in much greater leaps. Whereas if I set it to 10, it'll move in much smaller increments. To the right of that, we have snapping for angles. So if we're in the rotate mode, we can select the degree and angles that we want the object to snap to when rotating. So if I set it to like 45, it'll only rotate in 45 degree increments. And you can set that greater or smaller depending on what you need. And to the right of that, we have the scaling snapping options. And we can use this to set what scale that the object snaps to when we're scaling it. So if I set the value here to something like 1 and we go to scale the object, it's going to scale in multiples of 1 from the original scale. So I'm going to go ahead and control Z to undo that. And I'm going to set this back down to something like a 0.25 is more realistic for use for most things. And finally, we have the camera speed. And the camera speed determines how fast our camera moves around the environment when we manipulate it. And we're essentially referring to the camera that is generating this viewport here. So if we want to go ahead and move around the viewport, the most common method that I use is to right click into the viewport. And you can use the mouse to pan around with your camera. And then you can use the W, A, S, and D keys to move around, sort of like a first-person shooter. You can also click on both the left and right mouse buttons 
and pan around as well and use the W, A, S, and D keys to navigate as well. And you can use the arrow keys to navigate also. Now, one other thing I'd like to point out is in the lower left-hand corner here, we have an X, a Y, and a Z line. And what these are essentially doing is they're showing us the positive scales for the X, Y, and Z axis within the world. So right now, if I end up selecting this chair, we'll notice that the transform gizmo here is set to local mode. But if we go ahead and put it into a transform, we're going to see that we're in global mode. And you're going to notice that the red arrow lines up with the red arrow in this indicator. The blue arrow lines up with the blue arrow, as well as the green arrow lining up with the green arrow. So this little gizmo in the corner here is actually going to go ahead and give us a sense of direction within our world based on the actual world scale. To the right of our viewport window here, we have our world outliner. And the world outliner basically just contains all of the items that are in our level. Below that, we have a details pane. And the details pane will give us specific information about anything that we click on in the world. So right now I have the chair selected and you'll notice that the chair is the object that's detailed in here. But if I grab the floor, the information for the floor is going to show up in here. Now let's go ahead and switch over to uh, Visual Studio. And in Visual Studio here, we're going to have one main window in the center, which has nothing in it right now because we haven't opened up any files. But we're going to have a Solution Explorer over here and an output to the bottom as well. Now in our Solution Explorer here, you're going to notice that there's actually two projects. There's one for the engine itself, and there's one for the project that we actually created. So it's going to have the same name as what we created when we created our project. The actual files for our project are going to be stored inside of the source folder, inside of the project name folder. And you'll notice there's going to be some files that are already in here. So there's a couple of .h files, a couple of .cpp files, and uh, actually a .cs, which is a C sharp file. Well, we're not going to deal a whole lot with those. So you can navigate through your project within this file explorer over to the left here, or what Visual Studio calls the Solution Explorer. And we're going to want to make sure to go ahead and hit the Save All button before we do anything. And as we click on different files over here, you're going to notice that in the main window here, it's going to actually show the content of those files. And we don't really, really mess around with any of these files as of yet. I just want to give you a sense of where everything is located at. Now, one thing you're going to have to do very frequently is rebuild the project. So in order to do this, you're going to select on the project that is named for the project name that we gave it. And you're going to want to right click and click on rebuild. And at the bottom in the output, you're going to notice that there's some text that goes on as it goes ahead and it actually builds the project for us. And once it finishes rebuilding the project, you're going to see the line at the bottom here with all of the equal symbols and it'll show rebuild all, one succeeded, zero failed, zero skipped. And that's going to tell us that we went ahead and we rebuilt the project successfully. And you can go ahead and switch back and forth between the Unreal 4 editor and C++ as necessary. And so this video was designed to just give you an overview of creating a project and the overview of the editor and Visual Studio. In the next video, we're going to go on and we're going to create an actor and we're going to start talking about variables. So if you guys have any questions or comments, you can go ahead and leave them down below. Or you can head over to my Facebook page and comment and message me over there as well. And as always, guys, thanks for watching.